Hi, this section is on the solid state drive and what is a solid state drive and how do we look at solid state drives? Solid state stands for uh, something that has no moving parts. Solid state drive's got nothing inside here that moves, spins, or turns in any way, shape, or form, and that's why this one uh, is very different than a traditional hard drive that's spinning at 5,400, 7,200 revolutions uh, per minute. So a solid state drive uh, can be or is the same size as a two and a half inch traditional drive, uh, but inside it, instead of there being a disc with an actuator arm with platters and magnetic reed heads, it has uh, memory chips. It has memory chips and a memory controller, and it is a form of RAM that's inside here. Actually, it's NAND RAM inside there. So we've got a big difference between the two. Solid state, no moving parts versus a traditional hard drive with lots of moving parts inside there. And you can see on this graphic, the shock resistance difference uh, is huge between the two. This one can take 1500 G's in half a microsecond. That's a lot. We'll watch a video showing the difference between when this one uh, goes kablooey and when this one uh, keeps going. Uh, but that's a big thing. And, and you're thinking, well, I don't pull that many Gs. Every single time you drop your laptop onto your desk, it's pulling a huge number of Gs. You just don't feel it because you dropped your laptop. You didn't, it didn't happen to you. That's one of the biggest things with solid states when it comes to laptops. But there are obviously some other items that make a big deal uh, when we talk about solid states. So, we have a huge faster read-write speed. Uh, solid states have no moving parts, and they're, they're hugely faster. A high-end, we're talking 10,000 RPM uh, traditional hard drive, can only reach speeds of about 100 megabytes per se or 160 megabytes per second of actual transfer because of how long it takes to move and, and, and get your data. Now, it changes if it's defragmented. We talked about that last lesson. But... Um, it, it could make a huge difference on, uh, on how we get our data. So even though the cabling is rated at 600 megabytes, the actual read speed can be as low or is as low as 160 or only as high as 160 in a traditional hard drive. In a standard solid state drive, we're looking at 550 megabytes per second uh, as far as read and write 520 megabytes per second. So it's lower than the cable does at 600, which is obviously what we want. Um, but it's far faster than the fastest one of these. And really 160 isn't what a, what a consumer drive transfers at. So you can assume that this drive is transferring at at least five times faster than the one you replaced it with. Then we've got NVMe drives. These little drives that either go on you see it there? Little drives that either go on um, a motherboard or a special card that we put in our computer. NVMe drives reach 3,000 megabytes per second. So another six times faster than a traditional SATA hard drive. So we're looking at, at five times faster and then another six times faster. Five times six is 30. So this sucker is in the range of 30 times faster than a traditional hard drive that you might replace it with. That is a huge difference in speed. So that's the primary reason people go to solid states. Secondary reason is shock resistance. It's not a big deal when you're talking about your desktop. You're probably not moving that around very often. We have those in our servers. They're not moving ever. Um, but when it comes to a laptop, the difference in the amount of times or the amount of damage that this Will take versus the amount of damage that this will take in a traditional movement of a laptop is phenomenal. And let's not forget, as I mentioned before, these don't have brakes. Uh, when you turn off a laptop uh, with a traditional hard drive in it, it spins down and comes to a stop eventually. But most people barely even wait for the laptop light to go off on their screen before they close their bag or close their top, put it in their bag, and start moving. So this one almost always is still spinning, which it makes it even worse uh, when we go and move our laptop. So shock resistance is a big thing for solid state drives. Power consumption is another one. 
when we're on a battery and a laptop and we've got one that consumes far more and we can look at the the wattage up there than this one means our battery is going to last longer. So power consumption is a big deal, but also when we talk about our home PCs, if it's using less power, our power bill goes down. You can see on this that the consumption of a traditional solid state drive goes from three watts to a half a watt when it goes idle, and it goes idle more often because it reads faster, right? Uh, the traditional hard drive goes from six watts down to only four when it's at idle. So this uses more, four times more, when it's being idle than this one does when it's reading. So over time, the amount of power consumed with a solid state drive can add up and be far less. And when we're talking about our laptops, obviously it means our batteries will last much longer as well. Heat dissipation is the last big thing on hard drives. Our drives, shows on there make 70% of the heat inside a computer. If 70% of the heat of the heat in the system is this and I take it away, my system runs far cooler. And as we've migrated from traditional hard drives in many of our server functions to uh, actually NVMe drives for the speed, uh, we've seen that our traditional hard drives that are still in the systems last longer because they're cooler because there's not three drives pressed up against it. In many of our servers, we used to have stacks of hard drives in there, all generating tons of heat, all making each other hot. Um, and by going to solid state, you lower the heat dissipation, you improve the speed, and you know that your hard well, hardware will last longer because of that lower temperature. Lifespan's a last thing to talk about when we talk about solid states in general. In this article from ServerWatch, it said you can uh, count on this lasting two to three times longer. Uh, and that's true when it comes to mechanical failure in many cases, that because there's no uh, nothing to fail in here other than the memory and the, the um, electrical components themselves, it's looked at that this has a better longevity. However, longevity of data and how long I can read and write to it is something altogether different. This dies more every time I write to it, but there's no damage every time I read from it. This takes damage, wear and tear, every single time I read or write from it, but it can handle terabytes upon terabytes more writes and reads than a traditional or than a solid state can. So when we look at longevity, it depends on how you're using it. If you're using this NVMe to be Moodle's hard drive, we are, uh, I, we replace it every two years because of the fact that the database writes and reads from it so often, particularly writes to it, that it degrades the memory chips on here over time. And the last thing we want is Moodle just failing left and right because um, of the fact that it writes to it so often. Uh, on the other hand, um, this drive could have been in a server for, for five years without me worrying about it. Uh, and those drives that I use that are, that are enterprise grade drives that are now eight and 12 terabytes, uh, I'm gonna use for three to five years. I'm not gonna replace them every two years like I do a solid state drive and migrate them somewhere else. Uh, the other thing is that once we write data on a solid state versus writing data on a traditional hard drive, if we just wrote it and stopped, it would last longer on a traditional hard drive. The data degrades on a solid state at a faster rate. Now, what is that rate? If I write my pictures on here, are they going to be gone next year? No, not that fast. But if we were going to use this for archival purposes, we do uh, use drives for archival purposes, and I'm going to save the the data that I back up onto this drive and put it in a safe just in case. And 10 years later, I might want to pull it out. I'm going to use a traditional drive, not a solid state drive because of that data decay that can happen over an extended period of time on a solid state drive.